Hi everybody, welcome back to the second part of this double build of Airfix's brand new 148 scale fairy gannet. In this video I've been working on getting the two airframes put together which I've done as you can see and if you've seen the preview video you'll know that uh, I'm building one with the wings spread, this one, and one uh, with the wings folded. That's to uh, show off the gannet's really interesting wing fold mechanism. So what I've had to concentrate on really this week is to make sure that I've got the right combination of configuration uh, for the two builds that I'm putting together and not to get the parts mixed up from one version to another uh, but I think I've managed to uh, come through that unscathed. Uh, so uh, we'll make a start this week, we'll get over to the bench and I'm going to be starting off uh, putting the undercarriage base together. Okay let's make a start and uh, get this airframe moved on a little bit. Um, in the last episode, in part one, you'll know that I got the fuselage joined on both kits and since then I've just applied some sprue goo filler just to the joints just to make sure that I've covered all of those and closed them all up. I'm going to leave that for another day to fully set before I do any sanding on them. Uh, but I've plenty of work to do today on the wings and tail planes, so that's what I'm going to concentrate on. And uh, we'll be building, as I've said before, one extended wing version and one folded wing version. The first job I've got to do for both of those configurations is to build the wheel well, so that's where we're going to start off this week. These uh, wheel bays are quite an interesting design because Airfix give us this uh, box if you like and then separate inserts for the actual moulded uh, detail faces of each of the bulkheads. Obviously they do that because uh, it's not possible to mould all that detail in a closed box like this. And these bulkheads are really nicely detailed, they come out really nice I should think with uh, a bit of weathering wash to them. I'm just getting rid of the remnants of the ejector pin that was on the inside of these bulkheads, otherwise if you don't do that the bulkheads are not going to lie flush. And I have had uh, a bit of flash on the ejector pin marks on some of the parts in this kit so far. And again, that will obstruct the accurate fit of the parts, so just give them a quick swipe, just to make sure they're absolutely flat. They don't look much, but that's possibly a half or a quarter of a millimetre, something like that, of flash, which uh, it will make a difference, especially if you've got three or four parts coming together. And as I said, it just takes a moment to clean them up. Because the fit's so good on this kit so far, I'm going to paint these bulkheads separately, weather them, and then fix them together. I'll do a test fit first of all, just to make sure they are going to go together after I've uh, spent time painting and weathering them. There are little keys on these parts, so it's not possible to put them together incorrectly so that's the wheel bay dry assembled no glue necessary fabulous fits really good it's uh, one of the areas where airfix have really come on in the last few kits the standard of that fit is uh, up with the best really so as you can see that's just going to push together after I've painted the parts so I'll disassemble this prepare all the other pieces I'm not worried about getting them mixed up because as I've said it's not possible to assemble these incorrectly because of the key mechanisms so I'll spend a little time now getting the rest of these parts together and then we'll go on to the next step these are the four undercarriage bay units dry fitted got some uh, bottles here don't know what they are exactly but they go inside as well I'll paint those separately 
And uh, just before I do do the painting, I want to just follow an airfix instruction to check the undercarriage door into the slots, which is quite an unusual thing to have in instructions, directing us to check the part E38 here into those slots and to adjust the slots if necessary. Never seen that before. Well, it's a pretty good fit to me on all these. I think what Airfix are after is for you to get the bottom of these slots because there are two parts forming the slot. I think what Airfix are uh, hinting at is to make sure that they're both level at the bottom so the uh, door sits in the correct position. So uh, that looks fine to me. I'll get the uh, wing panels sorted out next. The upper part of the panels uh, is going to need to be painted the same colour as the wheelbase, which is an aluminium colour. I'll be using Tamiya gloss aluminium, followed by a weathering wash. So these are the wing panels for the extended wing version, obviously. So Airfix uh, are to be applauded here, I think, because they could easily have skimped on the design and either just provided the folded wing sections and expected you to glue them all together to form the extended wing or provided a cut mark on an extended wing and expected you to on the other hand cut it into pieces they haven't done either of those things and instead they've given us two sets of parts for each configuration which I'm all in favour of. It cuts down building time and it also gives a better result particularly for uh, the extended wing version because it's often difficult to line up separate wing panels and get the correct uh, dihedral and so on. So here we've got the sprue gate extending onto the mating surface so make sure that they're cleaned up properly. The other thing that I like about the design of the wings is that they plug in to this recess in the fuselage sides and are supported by these uh, large spars that are part of the Bombay assembly. And what that means is that you get a really nice clean wing to fuselage join, which you can see here, and also you get the correct uh, incidence of the wing set, in this case an anhedral on the inboard part of the wing uh, because you've got these really strong spars inside. So uh, it's a really good design which should help the build quite a bit. Airfix provide separate flaps and ailerons as you can see. I'll be having the flaps extended on this extended wing version and closed up on the folded wing version. So I've just got to remember in my mind the configuration of all these options on the two different builds. I'm just being careful here because there are three little tabs and it's easy to file those off. I'm assuming that they've got to remain. I'm not quite sure why. I'm wondering if they're just supports for the closed door version. If you're having the aircraft posed in flight. It doesn't tell us anywhere to remove those. So uh, I'll do as I'm told and leave them intact. I'll just check the fit just to make sure that they're going to go together properly. This is something that I would advise with these new Airfix kits with the new method of moulding the sprue gates. You do have to make sure that the mating surfaces are absolutely flat and clean. Which that one is, that's okay. These wings are quite thick and what Airfix do to prevent them flexing is give us some pieces which fit inside here 
uh, and form some box structures which stiffen the whole assembly up. So that's the next job. These are the boxes which uh, fit inside here like that and they add a lot of stiffness as I've said to the wing assembly when it's joined up. Really stops any flexing that there might be in there. But uh, before I glue those I want to drill out the holes that I need for the weapons and in this case or in both cases I'm going to be uh, using the rockets uh, and there are a couple of holes here further inboard near the wheel well which is for a bomb rack uh, and I'm not going to be fitting it to this extended wing version it wasn't present on the photographs I've got I'm going to talk about the options that I'm going to be using uh, a bit later on in the build so that's what I'm going to follow this one I'm just going to drill out the holes for the rockets just deburr those holes with a larger drill bit with those holes drilled I can now get in to fit these supports I've just noticed another two holes that I've missed. I'll just do a test fit of the undercarriage base. So they're a really nice fit and you can see how deep the wells are. The wing of the gannet at the inboard side is very thick. You could add some additional detailing if you want in there but uh, I'm not going to bother. This is more or less an out of the box build and I think it looks good enough with the detail that Airfix provide. So what I have to do now is prepare the inner wing panels so that I can do those undercarriage bays as well. So that's my uh, second version, I'll get the parts out for the folded wings. Bearing in mind how brittle this uh, hard FX plastic is, just need to be careful with these wing folds. It's going to be easy to break these off, and that would obviously weaken the whole folded wing arrangement. These are my undercarriage components all painted. I'll apply a weathering wash to these in a moment but before I do that I want to get the outer panels uh, built for the folded wing version. Again I need to drill out the positions for the rocket rails on the central panels on the wings. It's just easier to do that before I fit the strengthening box in. On this central section of wing we've got two sets of wing folds to sort out and here we have to pay close attention to the instructions to get the pieces in the correct place. I 
and to attach them in the correct order, uh, which Airfix point out in the instructions. So I'm just going to let this part set. This is the important piece because it's got the spar on it for the outermost wing panel. So I want to make sure that that's absolutely solid before I attempt to glue this one in position. Okay, get that one in now. These are the flaps for the center wing panels, which need to be closed for the folded wing version. So these are a single piece in the kit, and it's uh, a mark of how far Airfix have come along. If you look at the trailing edge on these, the razor sharp. And uh, particularly with it being one piece, that's the best solution if you can manage to mould it successfully. Because it would be very difficult to get that sort of sharpness with uh, a top and bottom that you've got to glue together. Okay, the last thing to do with the wings is the outer panels. Now on these uh, outer panels we've got the landing lights and we've got a wing tip also in clear which includes the navigation lights but I'm not going to fit those just yet. These are the ailerons which are in two halves. On the just going back to the full wing panels for a moment and the flaps, these will be in the extended position. So I've got to make a full setup with all the actuators on them. Okay, we'll uh, fit the actuators later because uh, these need cleaning up once they've dried. So uh, the next job is to carry on and go back to the undercarriage bays. Now I've painted these in Tamiya LP70, which is gloss aluminium, and that gives a really nice base to do some uh, weathering washes on. So for that I'll be using this AK enamel wash, this is landing gear wash.
Putting the wash on these parts makes you appreciate the detail that's moulded into them and uh, I think they'll look really nice once we've cleaned that wash up. I'm going to leave these to dry for a while. And I'll come back with a cotton bud and maybe we'll need some uh, white spirits to clean those up. It is an enamel wash as I said. Okay, time to clean these up now. They've uh, had a full day to dry, which is what I like to do with these AK washes. And if you've seen any of the other videos that I've done where I've used these AK, uh, they're really versatile. See, they clean up really nicely, leave all the wash in the detail and it also gives you that stain staining effect on the part as well it really lifts all that detail out these are really nicely molded parts that airfix have given us if you try to remove this wash too early you end up just sucking it all out of the detail so you're back to square one really and sometimes if you leave it too long it gets a bit hard in which case you just have to moisten the cotton bud with a little bit of white spirit or mineral spirits but not too much you don't want to soak it I just dip it into some white spirit and then mop it off on a paper towel just so that you've really just got it faintly moist otherwise again you'll just lift it all out it's a really nice stage I really enjoy uh, this wash stage starts to add a little bit of character to the model otherwise they can look, look a bit toy like sometimes if you don't do any attempt at all at a bit of weathering on them so if you imagine these all assembled into the undercarriage bay frames that I showed you earlier it would be much more difficult to get in to clean these up uh, so this method I always prefer if you can but it depends on how good the fit of the parts is in this case as we've seen the dry fit uh, was really good so it's no problem doing it this way and weathering the individual parts. If the fit was more problematic, you'd probably be better assembling the parts, cleaning them up and then doing the wash. Start to put the base together now. I've already done this one. Uh, which is one of the starboard ones and we're using these boxes that I showed you earlier on in the video and these parts I haven't numbered them or identified them in any way because I did reckon that they would only go in one position so I hope I'm right about that To take a little bit of care with these uh, central bulkheads because you can get them mixed up we just need to pay careful attention to the drawings in the FX instructions to make sure you get the right one so that's the first pair I'll make the other one up now then we can get them fitted into the wing panels get these undercarriage bays in and 
close the wings up at that stage. Again, just a last check to make sure I'm getting the right one on the right side. And straight away I'm going to join the top of the wing and clamp it together. That will help to locate the undercarriage bay. Now I nearly forgot there to drill out these two holes just outboard of the undercarriage bay and there for the bomb racks, optional bomb racks. And uh, my photograph of the option that I'm doing with the folded wings shows that it was carrying the bomb racks the other one wasn't when I say bomb racks I'm not sure that they were for bombs uh, they probably were carried in the bomb bay but um, possibly uh, drop tanks or the like the photograph I've got of the aircraft shows the bomb racks with nothing on them so I'm not sure what they were used for so those are the port uh, side wing units I'll uh, get the starboard ones done off camera and then we'll come back and sort out the tail surfaces. Okay, on to the tail surfaces now. using uh, some blue tack like that just to hold the parts whilst you're applying the glue it just uh, prevents or reduces the risk of you getting the glue on your fingers and smearing it all over the part itself This is one of those aircraft where the elevator is actually bigger than the horizontal stabilizer. And last up we've got the rudder. Yeah, leave all these flying surfaces to dry. So while that's all drying I'm going to come back to the uh, main fuselage now and fit this last piece in which is this uh, ray dome section. It is a good fit but it needs a little bit of adjustment because the way that you end up gluing this lower fuselage if you get it slightly out of line which is easy to do it means that it affects the fit of this insert. Uh, one of the fuselages is absolutely fine, uh, but I must have got this one slightly misaligned, so I've had a little bit more work to do with this one. So a little bit of adjustment along this join line here, and you find that the part fits in perfectly. It's really nice.
Airfix offer the option of an extended ray dome, but uh, that's only for the in-flight version. If you extend it for aircraft on the undercarriage, it won't sit on the undercarriage properly. So just bear that in mind when you're choosing your options. If you're extending the ray dome, there's just a little panel that goes in to push the ray dome out. But uh, for our versions, the ray dome just goes straight down and fits into the underside of the cockpit floor. What I'm trying to do here is get this panel line nice and straight. At the moment the parts are slightly mismatched. So that just improves that line and I think that's good enough to fit in place now. These were actually opening doors, you can see the hinges here. So it doesn't have to be perfectly aligned as though it's a fuselage skin or anything like that. That's all good, I'm happy with that. This uh, filler which is actually sprue goo that I've used for the central join on the fuselage, that's uh, been drying for a couple of days. So uh, that's okay to sand off now. I do like to leave any sort of filler that I use for a couple of days usually to make sure it's absolutely set because otherwise what can happen is once you start sanding it and it's not fully gone off it tends to pull out of the join and you're back to where you started. You can use a standard filler on this obviously but uh, I just had some sprue goo mixed up. For those of you that don't know that's just uh, off cuts of styrene uh, mixed with some liquid cement. Melts the plastic and when you apply it to the model it just reverts back to its original form, solidifies and you usually get a really good finish with it. I'll test all these joins with some primer when we come to do the uh, finishing of the airframe and the painting in the next episode. But for now I just want to get the basic clean up done. Usually I use a bit of water when I'm sanding it just tends to cut down the scratching of the plastic surface. The more you scratch it obviously the more you've got to work on it get the worst off with a flat sanding stick like this but when you're getting down to the join I'm going to turn to a foam sanding sponge and that just prevents you putting a flat on the top of this curved fuselage. The sanding sponges here are Tamiya sanding sponges and you get them in sheets, I just cut them up into strips, apply them with some double sided tape onto coffee stirrers like this. Those of you that have watched a lot of my videos or your regular viewers, you'll know that I use these a lot. And the sponge backing just makes sure that, as I said, you don't put a flat on a curved join got some panel lines that I'm going to have to reinstate here. That looks alright but uh, as I said I'll test uh, the join with some Mr Surfacer next time out. So we'll assemble the stabiliser and elevators. So at this stage what I want to do is uh, loose fit the control surfaces on the tail and fit the wings loosely as well and check the uh, fulcrum point to make sure that the aircraft is going to sit on its legs. 
So these tail surfaces, again, we've got this piece of the stabilizer that goes right inside the fuselage like that. So it gives us, a, again, a really nice clean join onto the fuselage. And these two tabs interlock. So that's a really nice join again. I'm not going to bother with the little winglets on the tail for the moment. They're not uh, much of a weight so they're not going to have a big effect. Just pop the rudder on. And here we've got our wing panels. Which again just push in. need to juggle them a little bit but you know when you've got the correct fit they go right in for a nice snug join. So the undercarriage fits here at the aft side of the wheel bay so that's going to be our datum if you like. So that's a line along the position of the main undercarriage legs. So I just want to make sure that the aircraft is heavier forward of that line. So the centre of gravity at the moment is just forward of this line. Uh, so it's pretty close to where the undercarriage is going to sit but we're on the right side at the moment. But what we've got to think about is that we've also got the radome to fit after the datum, some weapons to go in the rear part of the bomb bay as well. We've got the flaps and ailerons and nothing really further forward except for the nose surface. So it's really quite a marginal balancing point at the moment. So to make absolutely sure what I'm going to do, and I mentioned about this in the first part of the series, is I'm going to add a little bit more weight into this, which is the nose section and the intake section of the aircraft. I've already made the uh, propeller pivot on that one. So we'll do the same for the second aircraft. And if you watch that first part, you'll know that uh, we've got these two intake sections with these little veins inside. That fits onto the rear side of the intake there. And the depth of this is the reason why we had to be careful fitting all that nose weight into the uh, front part of the aeroplane. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is add some more liquid gravity into this. So this is the liquid gravity that I used in the last episode in the nose. So with these two pieces filled with a liquid gravity, we've got another five to six grams of weight in the nose. So I reckon altogether I've put something in the region of 72 grams of weight in this aircraft. We're a day on and the uh, counterweight here has dried. The PVA has dried, so that's not going to go anywhere now. And you can also see that I've given this intake section and these veins a coat of the sky colour, which is the underside and side colour of the gannet. The top side's been dark sea grey. 
And I've done that because it's easier to try and get the paint into these very tight little spaces with the part uh, not fitted to the main airframe. And you're able to get the paint into the areas that you need it to. So now I need to fix the vein and I want to make sure that this is securely attached because I don't want it pushing out. It would be very difficult to do that. But even so, I want to make sure that this is a really strong connection. This is another example of really clever parts design because what Airfix have done is put the location tabs on the outside of this grill piece. And that just makes it easier to get the glue where you want it without the danger of it seeping into the intake and spoiling the finish. So they're ready to fit to the two airframes now. So this intake piece on the nose, it's not a bad fit, but it's going to need a little bit of work to get it completely smoothed in. And that comes down to the way that your fuselage halves go together. There's a little bit of play in them. So depending on how they're set up, you might find slightly different fits of this nose. But uh, that's good enough at this stage. That's not going to take too much clean up and we're not going to remove too much of the surface detail. So I'm happy enough with that. What I've found to get a good fit of this is just to twist it round a little bit until it settles in. And it kind of finds its own position. One thing I have found on both of my models is this gap here, which is going to need a bit of filler on the port side of the fuselage. The last thing to do before I get this model ready for painting, which I'll do as I said in the next episode, is to fix the ailerons on this version. I keep forgetting how heavy this model is, or nose heavy, and uh, when I pick it up, a couple of times I've nearly dropped it. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there for this episode. It's quite a lot of work uh, gone into prepping these airframes. Uh, but I'm fairly happy with how they've come together. They fit really good, these wing joints. Uh, mean that I'm toying with the idea of painting the wings separately and then just plugging them in and that way we'll get a really nice demarcation of the dark sea grey with the sky on the side of the fuselage but uh, I'll have a think about that for the moment I'm just going to leave the wings unglued and the tail surfaces as well so that's it for this one hopefully next time we'll get the airframe uh, with a final clean up, one or two of the canopies fixed, and we'll start to do some painting. So that'll be coming up next week. Uh, hopefully, you'll be able to join me for that. And I hope for those of you that have got the kit and have started it, you're enjoying it just as much as I am. So enjoy your modelling, everybody, and uh, see you next time. Bye for now.